Good morning, everyone. It's so good to be back with you guys. I'm Tamara Bennett uh, with Southern Adornments Decor, and we're going to be painting today one of the best-selling designs in our shop this past weekend. So every week, hold on, I forgot to flip the camera. Every week we release five new designs in our shop. Whoop, that's not what I meant to do, showing y'all my chandelier. Um, every week we did release five new designs in our shop. And this is the one that we, uh, one of the ones we released this past week. I can't talk and think at the same time, and I'm flipping the camera on both, both things. Oh, so glad you are here. Let's see. Okay, I think I finally got it right. Um, I'm also kind of losing my voice. Is anybody else kind of experiencing the seasonal allergies that's kind of killing your, your voice and everything? It's so obnoxious. <laughs> Good morning, Carolyn. Hi, Alicia. Hello, Sarah. Um, so anyways, we release five new designs in our shop every Friday and this past Friday we came out with five new patriotic designs. I know right now is not the season for putting out patriotic decor, but you're going to blink and Memorial Day is going to be here and then 4th of July. So we try to give you guys a bit of a head start on doing, um, you know, uh, uh, the next holiday. So this design was the best seller in our shop this weekend, which is this cute little truck with the little fireworks and everything in the background and um we're gonna be painting this today ray says she has the same top frames on today we are feeling our leopard print today aren't we <laughs> thank you guys um so let's get started we're gonna be painting this truck i forgot to pull up a picture of it but hold on i'll tell you what i'm gonna do hold on i like to have a picture to look at let me print it out real quick good morning tanya Hello, Valencia. How many of you guys have been painting this weekend? Hello. I know a lot of you guys uh, watched me all last week. We painted all of these little designs um, with the, the flowers on them, the flowers for mom. And so a lot of you guys, I think, have been painting those over the weekend. Let's see if I can print this out. All right. Sending it to the printer. That way I can actually see what I'm what I'm painting. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Sharon. It's always good to have a plan. I always feel kind of funny if I sit down to paint and I don't have a plan because I'm so used to planning it out first on like my Procreate um, app on my iPad. And so if I sit down, I'm like, I, and, and also it's very hard to multitask to talk to you guys and to paint at the same time. Kim said she went to a retreat this weekend. Thank you. There we go. There's what it's going to look like. I've got the picture all pulled up here. Um, so what kind of retreat was it, Kim? Was it a crafting retreat? That sounds like fun. So we're doing a, a crafting retreat of our own in Dallas, Texas this summer, July 15th and 16th. If y'all want to know more about it, I would love to tell you about it. Hey, Carrie. Hi, Laura. So we're going to be gearing up to sell tickets for that in the next couple of weeks, but um, I did put a link in the description for it if you want to find out more about it. It's going to be a two-day event. We're going to craft um, and, and do make all kinds of fun things over the period of about two days. And it's going to be like one big crafting retreat slash slumber party. It's going to be a blast. Hi, Robin. Hi, Donna. <laughs> she said, I've watched all your YouTube videos. I'm good. How are you? I'm so glad you found me. Um, so I'm just going to start with painting the window on this. We're going to do it the gray sky color. Um, and I am going to paint around these little um, bunting flags instead of painting over them. Sometimes I paint over everything um, when I'm painting backgrounds, but I think I'll paint around these. They'll be pretty easy to paint around. But I will paint over our um, fireworks right here because the fireworks uh, are going to be real hard to paint around. And they will be easy to see through the paint, and I'll be able to just paint those later. Y'all can't see them through the paint, but I can. Good morning, Pat. How are you? What is, uh, you want to come to the retreat? What is in your, what is in your hair? Want to come to the retreat? <laughs> That's like two questions in one sentence. Uh, you're probably seeing my feathers. I have little uh, feathers in my hair. Are those not fun? Um, so I'm making a door hanger. This is going to hang on the front door, and that's what I teach. I teach door hanger painting. So whereas some people hang up wreaths, I, I don't do wreaths. I do painted door hangers. They're made of a lightweight wood, and you can paint them for all the seasons. 
and um, it's just real satisfying to paint something and to hang it on your door and to be proud that, that you're the one who created it. So I have in our in our shop when we list the new designs, all of them have the color version um, alongside them, so that you can kind of see or see see like what you might want to paint it like. But I have not painted every single one of the designs. <clears throat> we have hundreds of YouTube videos over on my YouTube channel teaching you how to paint these. And so a lot of our designs do have videos that you can go and watch, but not all of them. Because we, we come out with about 20 to 25 new designs every month. So you can imagine that would be me painting almost every single day to be able to get all of those. I'm also going to go ahead and just paint around. Well, actually, no. Well, let's just paint over them. I was trying to decide if I was going to paint around them or what. But because there's going to be red on these firecrackers, um, gray is a good base coat for red. I don't know if y'all know that. But gray is a great base coat for red because it kind of helps it um, cover better when you go to paint the red. <clears throat> good morning, Barbara and Belinda. Can we buy one? I don't sell the painted ones. A lot of my customers do. I just sell the wooden blanks like this and you can paint at home. So if you wanna paint your own, I sell those, but I don't sell the finished product. But you can buy the, um, the wooden blanks at shopdoorhangers.com. Well, Nicole, that sounds like a perfect way to relax to me. Go to the craft store, buy some paints, and go come home and paint. Sounds ideal. <laughs> Let's go ahead and paint these little side mirrors, too. Get them painted gray, and then we'll paint the blue on our truck. I'm not being real careful to stay inside the lines on some of this, because I know that my blue's going to cover. <laughs> Hello, Pat. Welcome. Southern California. What are we doing? So we're painting a door hanger. This is going to hang on a front door. It's in the shape of a cute little truck. It's patriotic. I have a picture here with all my colors planned out. So this is what it's going to be painted like when we're done. I teach you guys how to paint these. I don't sell the finished product, but I teach you guys how to paint them. I have a membership called the Painters Clubhouse. Good morning, Linda. A lot of our Painters Clubhouse sisters are watching right now. Hey, Wanda. Hi, Kara. Here comes Charlie. You want to show him the kitty? <laughs> we're kitty. We're kitty cat sitting this week. <laughs> Babysitting the kitty. Isn't she cute? Yeah. She's super cute. <laughs> uh, have you seen Shadow? No, I have not. The kitty belongs to my niece, and they are off on a vacation this week, so we are kitty, kitty cat sitting. She's going to go home exhausted after Charlie packing around all the time. <laughs> Uh, do you do one or two coats of paint? It really depends on the color I'm using. So this gray may not require a second coat, especially since we're gonna do something else kind of on top of it in a bit um, to make it look like a window, kind of streaked. <laughs> hey, Chris. Charlie never sticks around long enough for me to read y'all's comments to her. She comes in, she's like, hi, everybody. And then she turns around and she runs off. <laughs> You don't know which is cute, Charlie or the, or the kitten? <laughs> I'm not sure which one's more trouble either because the kitten, she she's still not 100% like great at using the litter box. I mean, she does use the litter box, but her aim is a little off. We discovered that this morning. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what blue I'm going to use. I keep changing my mind here. They're all, a lot, a lot of these are kind of the same. I think I'm just going to use this one. It's called True Blue. It's in the um, the rainbow paint pack. Whoops, I shouldn't have, oh well, I just did it. We're gonna go with it. I put it in the same egg carton hole as my gray was in, but the gray was almost gone, so I don't guess it's gonna matter. So we're gonna use our large flat tip brush. That's what I'm using here. And we're just gonna paint every area that the truck is, this bright true blue, I think that's what it was called. Can you hear those girls? Charlie's uh, got a friend over today and they are just having like a dance party and having a blast because it's spring break around here and we didn't go anywhere for spring break. So we're having friends over. One big party. All right, your paint looks like it spread easily. My paint doesn't. It's just a wet. 
Okay, if your paint does not spread easily, it could be that you are using a brand of paint that's thicker, um, that's not this smooth. I use DecoArt Americana. It's a nice, like, it's just thick enough, but it's also just thin enough that it smooths out nicely. It could be that your paint is kind of old. If so, sometimes paint can get thicker the longer it sits. So what you could do is add just a teeny bit, a teeny, teeny bit of water to it to thin it out a little. Um, it could also be that you just don't have enough paint on your brush. People seem to be kind of shy about how much paint they put on their brush. I'm not shy about it. I, I get a decent amount and I keep re-dipping my brush fairly frequently. I saw a question about stencil. What was that? Um, she was looking for templates. Oh, okay. Melissa helped her out. Yep. Um, how do you hang that? Does it have holes? So these don't have holes in them because I prefer to hang my designs using jute string. I staple it into the back. And so um, if you wanted holes, you could easily drill holes into these or something like that. I'm just going to paint over that. You could easily drill holes into these. I just prefer to staple jute string to the back. And I, I, I tie a knot on each end of the jute string so it doesn't slip out from under the staple. And you have to use like quarter inch thick um, stipples. Stipples? Staples. <laughs> stipples. <laughs> um ceramic coat you like that paint I haven't used that one Denver and whiskey wants to know how they join but I don't know what they're on there are, if you're talking about joining painters clubhouse it's closed right now um, you can go um, to the I don't know if you're watching on TikTok or, or Facebook but either way the link is in my profile or up in the video description depending on where you're watching um, you can go and download my Beginner's Guide to Painting uh, Door Hangers ebook, and that'll help you get started. And then we will be reopening the membership in the fall. We just closed. Charlie, hush. <laughs> can you hear her? <laughs> we just closed the doors to it because we opened it um, last week. And so we only open two times a year. I don't know if y'all can hear those girls in there. Uh, hey, they're out there. They're not in here. So. <laughs> Melissa said this one has a lot of curves and nooks and crannies. Yeah, you just have to take your time with it. Um, it's got a lot more on the design than some of my others. So it just depends. You know, if you're a beginner painter, you may not want to start with one like this that has um, a lot of a lot of things on it. And if, and if you ever feel like you, you know, you don't want to paint around everything, you could just paint over it and just paint in layers. So like for these letters, I'm sitting here trying to decide, do I want to paint over them? Well, one letter is red, one's white, and one is a lighter color of blue. So I may as well go ahead and just paint over these. And I could do a base coat on the red and the, um, the red and the white letter with, um, well, on the red letter with gray. White would not need a base coat. I use DecoArt Americana paints. That's what I'm using today. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. She opened her birthday card from you yesterday. My daughter Charlie's turning seven tomorrow. And Miss Sharon sent her a birthday card and a gift in the mail. Made Charlie feel so special. Okay, so that's all the blue. Let's go ahead and dry that. And we're gonna paint the bumper gray. I should have gone ahead and done that when I painted the, the bumper or the window and everything up top, but I didn't think about it. What does your shirt say? It says be you. Be you. Nobody else can be you, so you might as well be you. <laughs> This is the gray sky color. We're going to use this on the bumper. This is the same color we used on the window and the little side mirrors up here. So when you're painting door hangers, the best thing to do is to just start in sections and to just get your base coats down. So you see I've painted all the gray sections gray, the main parts of the blue blue, and then I'm going to go back and start adding the other elements on top of that, like the letters and everything else. So 
Um, and don't worry, we can still see the lines. Like I can still see the letters USA through the paint. Even if you guys can't, I can. I'll try to show you up close in a moment when the paint's dry so you can see that you can see them because they're laser etched. So they're just slightly kind of carved into the wood. Um, so I can still see those colors or those colors, those lines. That middle part there is going to be a license plate, so I'm not going to paint that gray. <clears throat> Rose, you want to know if you can have this one? Well, send me a private message and maybe we can work something out because I don't normally sell by painted designs. But since you asked so nicely, <laughs> send me a private message. We'll see what we can do. Maybe we ought to auction off the door hanger I paint every week. <laughs> Just have like a silent auction going while I'm painting it and be like, the bid's up to $350. No, just kidding. It wouldn't go that high, but that would be fun. <laughs> I laugh because this past weekend, um, our our good friend we, that we call Uncle Corey, he uh, did a silent auction to raise money for a, a local child that has autism. And it was Autism Awareness Day, actually, that the auction ended. And... Um, it, he had like a hundred items on there and people were bidding like crazy. I mean, bidding above the cost of what things were valued at. And I think it was because he had it set to where you could see who was bidding. So my husband was like getting in a bidding war with Uncle Corey's brother, Kyle. And they were like ragging each other on, you know, like bidding against each other. And it became like this game. And I mean... I'm like having to tell my husband, like, stop, stop bidding. <laughs> but they weren't the only ones. There were lots of other people who did that as well. It kind of becomes like a competitive game that they enjoy playing. <laughs> our blue is still wet. But I'm going to go ahead and proceed with getting our base coats on here so that we can get to the fun parts. To me, the fun parts is all the details. Go ahead and take our white and we'll paint our little license plate. And if you guys want to, we'll do some happy mail. I have a feeling Aaliyah says it's time for happy mail. So if you will drop a comment and tell me, um, let's see. Facebook. Let's do the Facebook one. Okay. And then we'll do a TikTok one. So we'll do a drawing on Facebook first, and then we'll do a one on TikTok. So the one on Facebook, tell me. Um, I need a good question. Do you have plans for spring break? Like, we don't. Our plans are always to. Uh, like do yard work and to get caught up on things around home because we always go on like a, a family trip after school lets out in the summer. So we don't take a, a trip during spring break. We use that time to relax and get caught up on things. So what are your spring break plans? Answer that question in the comments and we'll pick a random person to win some goodies and we'll mail them to you. Are you streaming over on YouTube? No, we're not streaming to YouTube today, just Facebook and TikTok. No plans, Barbara. Kind of sounds good. Sometimes no plans is, is the best plans. Does anybody else get kind of excited when plans get canceled? Like plans that you were, like, weren't were super excited about to begin with and then all of a sudden plans get canceled and you have nothing planned? It's like all of a sudden it's free time. Hey, Lauren's watching. You guys are going to Magic Kingdom. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Getting a yard ready for summer. That's exactly what we're doing, Kristen. Exactly. I'm going to get my kids out in the yard probably tomorrow or the next day when the rain stops. It's kind of rainy today and we're going to pull weeds. They're not excited about it. <laughs> going to OBX. Ooh, nice. You can pretend you have spring break even if you don't have kids. You can say, this is my spring break time. Just schedule it on your calendar every year. <laughs> Building a tiki bar by the pool. That sounds awesome, Stacy. We're hoping to get a pool this summer. Okay, our, our Facebook Happy Mail winner is Britt Gardner. 
Congratulations, Britt. Prepping for a free paint event. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Going to the beach. Girls Beach, where's Neptune Beach? Is that in Florida or is that in Cali like California? Or I mean, I know Florida and California are not the only places that have beaches, but that's the first places that come to mind. Oh, you're no plans. Your grandbabies come to stay with you. That sounds like an, an awesome week, Shannon. <laughs> Painting door hangers. Yes, that sounds like fun. Okay. So we've got our base coat colors on here. Now let me show you. Do you see through the gray? You can obviously, and then through the blue, you see, you can kind of see the lines and stuff. They're easier to see in person than they are on camera. The gray is really easy to see on camera. But like I was saying, you can paint right over those lines and then just keep painting later. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this gray. And because I was telling y'all that gray is a good undercoat or a good primer coat under red, I'm gonna paint this letter U with the gray so that we have a base coat for our red. And I'm just using a little half inch wide flat tip brush. By the way, if you wanna get the supply list for this project, all you have to do is text the word list to my phone number. I've got it up in the video description. And we will um, text you the color list and a link back to the video and all that. And if you're watching on TikTok, um, I know TikTok lives don't stay on TikTok. So this is recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube later today. So if you go follow my YouTube channel, you'll have access to this video and you can rewatch it at your own pace when you're ready to sit down and paint. That, uh, that little spot on the U was not covering good because I think the blue underneath was still just a little bit wet and so it was smearing into the gray. So I'm drying it first. You always want to dry in between coats because even if you're painting like blue on top of blue, if you dry your first coat before you start your second coat, you'll get much better results because what happens is, is that when you go to paint your second coat, the second coat doesn't have anything to grab onto because the undercoat, the first coat, if it's still wet, is slippery. It's sliding around. And so when you push your brush, it's just pushing both coats over to the side. So if you want to have good coverage, you have to dry between coats. Now that that's dry, I can get much better coverage with that gray. And then we'll paint that red in a moment when it's dry. But we'll move on because this, this letter here is gonna be white. We'll paint it. Uh, LaDonna, I'm not selling the truck. Oh, how much is it? Unpainted. Okay. If you go um, to shopdoorhangers.com, uh, the link is up above. You can get the, you can get it in, hang on. I cannot see that. I said I could see the line. It starts to fade. Hold up. So pay attention and stop talking for a second. I can kind of see it. Um, if you go to shopdoorhangers.com, you can get them in four sizes. The largest, which is our door hanger size, is 20 inches. And so you can um, get that one for $24. Now, if you're a Painters Clubhouse member, don't forget to use your, your discount code. Clubhouse members get 20% off. And also, if you are on our texting list or our email list, every week we will notify you when we come out with new designs. And we'll let you know that when the sale is going on. So this design was 15% off on Friday through Sunday. The sale ended uh, on Sunday, but if you are were one of the lucky ones to pay attention to the email or the text, you probably snagged this one at a discount, and you can combine that discount with your Painters Clubhouse discount code, so that's great. Like I said, this one was the best seller in the shop this weekend. So that kind of gives me a clue that it's probably going to be a, a good seller like at our at your crafting events. If you set up at craft shows and things like that, this will be a good seller. How far away do you hold the dryer from the paint? Mm, I'm probably about five inches away right now, but I try not to hold it on any one spot too long. The paint does not bubble up, Regina. What it does is the paint will start to crackle. 
Like if you hold it on, if the paint, well, and that also depends on how thick your paint is. If, you're, if your paint is very thick and you hit it with too much heat, it'll zap the moisture out of it and then you'll have like these cracked lines running through your paint. So if your paint is, you know, if you're doing it in thin layers like this, then the heat's not going to bother it. You might have to try my nails, Laura said. Oh yeah, my, so this is two weeks tomorrow these nails will have been on. So these are red aspen nails. They look like salon nails. And you know what? Up until a month ago, I was going to the salon every two to three weeks to get a new set of nails. But I'm now hooked on the red aspen nails. They're press-on nails, essentially. Like you put glue on your nail. And then you push these on and they stay on. I mean, the last set I had on before these, I took them off at 19 days. And they, I still, um, they would have lasted longer but my nails were starting to grow out and they just needed changing. I think I only had one pop off and it popped off on day 18. So yeah, if you wanna try them out, text me um, and ask for my Red Aspen link and I'll give you more information about that. If you're watching on TikTok, the Red Aspen link is in my profile, but they're great. <clears throat> my nose has started running. These allergies are killing me. <laughs> okay, so for the for the letter A, it's supposed to be blue, but our truck is blue, so we need to make sure and choose a different shade of blue, one that's going to stand out. I kind of thought about this one. It's like a, a baby blue. Might look good. Let's try it. So do you, do you buy your wood by the sheets? Yes, yeah, so we buy um, quarter-inch Revolution plywood at Lowe's. It comes in an eight-foot by four-foot sheet. Um, Sonia, you'll need to text me to get the asp red aspen link. I'm not able to pop it in the comments right now. But yeah, it's a quarter inch thick and it's a type of plywood underlayment. So if you don't have a Lowe's, if you're shopping at Home Depot, look for the plywood underlayment that's quarter inch. Lauren wants to know if there's damage or nails so if you try to pry them off without following any instructions when you take them off they will damage your nails however if you follow the instructions and you let your nails soak in like warm soapy water but first you're supposed to like loosen them up under the edge of the cuticle like right around the cuticle area with like an orange stick or something just gently like break the seal and then you let them soak in warm soapy water for like 15 minutes and then you can like take that same cuticle pusher and just gently pull them off instead of like prying them off because you do not want to pry them off. They're on there really well. Let the soap and the water soften, soften up the glue and they'll come off a whole lot easier. Do you prefer red ply over an MDF? Um, I actually prefer painting on MDF because it's smoother. But the MDF is hard to find around here. So when we get our shop going out back, um, and it's only like a week away from being done, I'm actually getting ready to move my shipping operations in there tonight. I'm excited. Um, but yeah, Aaliyah didn't know that. She's like, ooh, yeah. I got the go ahead from the contractor yesterday, which is funny because y'all, this is this is kind of a personal story, but y'all will get a kick out of it. So the night before, my husband and I were talking, and I'm like, can I go ahead and like move my shipping stuff out to the shop, you know, and get set up out there and go ahead and start shipping in there because they're not quite done. They're still like finishing up painting on a few things. And he's like, no, like we don't want to be in their way and all this. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, the next day the contractor's out there and he said, I need to talk to you about a few things. And I said, okay, well, he was asking like what kind of tables and workbenches I wanted and stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm really not sure. I wish I could get out here and kind of like test it out first. He goes, We'll do it. Move all your stuff out here and go ahead and start shipping. And so I told my husband, I'm like, sorry, the contractor said it was okay. <laughs> he was all worried about being in their way. And they're like, no, you're not going to be in our way. It'll be oh, fine. No, I just found that different. The contractor <laughs> needs me. To yeah, set the contractor <laughs> needs me to set up out there. So he told me tonight he would help me move all of my shipping operations out to the shop. But anyway, I say all that to say that when we um, begin finally cutting out there in that shop, we're gonna find someone we can purchase the MDF through wholesale because you cannot buy it here from any of our lumber suppliers. You have to like special order it and then it's expensive. So I'm hoping I can find it 
on wholesale through someone so that we can continue to cut and ship that type of material. Because that, that is what we cut and ship right now. Have you found the prices of wood to be a big jump since the pandemic? Not in my area. Well, okay. The quarter inch revolution plywood has not jumped up a tremendous amount in my area. But my contractor said that the um, the plywood, just a sheet of plywood, has jumped up a lot, um, like regular plywood. So he also he also told me I didn't tell you this, Aaliyah, that the cost of like our steel building, like what we have up, the cost of building a steel building has gone up thirty percent since we mm. built ours. So I was glad we went ahead and did it when we did. The four years it's taken to do it. Yeah. 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 But I'm excited because my husband's going to be working out there. He's going to be laser cutting our blanks and shipping them. And it's just going to open up a whole lot more um, options for what we're able to sell you guys, what we're able to offer. Hopefully, we'll be able to start doing um, a lot more things that have three-dimensional pieces. Like, you know, ideally, this design could have three-dimensional letters that say USA and three-dimensional bunting pieces to make it more, um, I don't know, oh. three-dimensional. <laughs> Fun, yeah. You can't get Rev Ply. Oh, well, that's probably, that that brand may not be offered, Jerry, at your local hardware store. So when, when you call them, ask for quarter-inch plywood underlayment. Underlayment is just the type of plywood. It's not a brand. Revolution's a brand. A brand. <clears throat> Ooh, it went from 13 to 27. Well, Leanne, I haven't looked recently because the last time I needed some, I sent my husband. So it could have gone up and I just didn't know it because he was the one uh, that went and bought it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and paint these little bunting pieces. This one is going to be a red and white stripes. So we'll just paint it white. And it takes a couple coats to get this white coverage good. You want to do a TikTok? Yeah, let's do a happy mail on TikTok. Uh, Miss Ponce says, my phone died when I was asking how you hank it. Does it have holes? No, it does not have holes. Um, we staple quarter inch, or we staple a uh, jute string to the back using quarter inch thick staples or quarter inch long staples rather. Um, so yeah, on TikTok, if you are watching right now, if you will just comment with where you are from in the comments, we will pick a random person to send happy mail to. So just comment like your, you can comment your state or your city and your state if you want. Let us know where you're watching from. And we're going to pick somebody at random to send some goodies in the mail to. It's just our little way of showing appreciation to those of you who have showed up to watch live today. Georgia, Arkansas, North Carolina, Arkansas, Oklahoma. I'm from Kentucky, in case you were wondering. In case you're like, where is that accent from? <laughs> I had somebody text me the other day and she said where are you from I recognize your accent and I said Kentucky and she said oh I thought for sure it was like North or South Carolina <laughs> I said no I don't quite have that that draw like there's a different kind of draw for North and South Carolina but I did live in North Carolina for a year when my husband was in the Marines Destin Florida oh I'll be going there in a few weeks Paris, Tennessee. That's just down the road from me. I'm from Murray, um, Murray, Kentucky. <laughs> People tell you you talk slow. I love the way you guys talk. I love it. To me, it reminds me of like a good old fashioned Southern Belle. Clarksville, Tennessee. Yep, that's not too far either. I did a video once, um, or a TikTok once, after going through the Pop Shelf store in Clarksville. And so I think a lot of people from Clarksville started following me after that video. Because everybody thought I was from Clarksville. I'm, a, I'm about an hour and 15, 20 minute drive from Clarksville. 
Um, okay, so our TikTok winner is Artisan Comforts. Congratulations. She's from Clarksville, Tennessee. <laughs> uh, Richmond, Virginia. Okay, so now these other two little flags, I'm going to paint the same color as the, the A on our USA because they're supposed to be blue with a white star. And this is the baby blue. Martin just did this one this weekend. I think a lot of people are going to be painting this one. Like I said, this was a bestseller in the shop. So I think it's going to be a popular one. It'll be great because this one doesn't say like, it doesn't say 4th of July on it. So really you could hang this one up for Memorial Day or what, Veterans Day. Anytime you want to feel patriotic. He grew up in this area. <laughs> You're welcome. I did too. I went to Murray State University, born and raised here. It's home. Murray State and Austin P have always been big rivals though. We love our basketball. All right, it's gonna take a couple coats to get this blue covered good. <laughs> Laura said, I guess we all have an accent depending on who you talk to. Yeah, and it's funny because like I get, I get asked about my accent the most when I'm down in Florida. And I guess it's because when I'm in Florida, I'm usually around people who are not from the South or they're not from Florida. They're like from Wisconsin or somewhere up front, uh, up North. They're snowbirds and they come down to Florida for the winter and so then they recognize my accent and they're like where are you from but even people who live in Florida like year-round like I've been in stores there gone shopping and they're like where are you from <laughs> it's just funny to me that Florida does not have a southern accent and they're in the south because they all came from the north that's true they all came from the north you went to Murray State she said but the what oh <laughs> the one in Oklahoma yeah not the same Murray State Racers. That's what I'm talking about. All right, do another coat on this blue. This blue does not, I mean, it's covering okay, but needs another coat. I thought it might be fun to do the fireworks on this with gold puff paint. So I'm, I'm not, uh, I haven't used that stuff in forever, but I thought we'd give it a try today. So we'll do that toward the end. <laughs> yeah, I got asked about my accent, accent when I was out in California a lot, too. <laughs> when you get your shop up and running, will you be having it open so we can come there and buy supplies? No, it won't be that kind of shop. Um, it'll just be our, our shop where we cut everything, but it won't be like a public store. Everything will still be online. Um, I'm seeing all of them. I just, it's, it's hard for me to read all of them because I'm painting. <laughs> and so I look up and I catch one or two, but I can't quite read them all because they go by before I can get them. <laughs> Their sweet tea's not sweet at all. <laughs> uh, where was it that I went? And it might have been New York or somewhere, and they, they didn't have sweet tea. Like, it was not sweet. I went to Chicago several years ago, and they didn't know what I was asking for. <laughs> they thought you were probably asking for, like, warm tea. Like, no. I, I think I also tried to order biscuits and gravy somewhere up there, and they're like, what? <laughs> what is that? They did not know. 
course, there's a McDonald's around here have biscuits and gravy, and there's lots of McDonald's um, that you cannot get biscuits and gravy at because they just aren't, it's not on the menu. I'm like, well, it is around here. Several people are wanting to know how much your cutouts are. Okay, so these designs come in four sizes, um, and you can get 20 inch, which is the biggest size. And then you can also get 12 inch, which would be great for, you know, like a porch sign or a wreath attachment or something like that, or just to sit on a shelf. And the largest size is $24. The 12 inch size, I believe, is more like $14. Um, but then we also have like six and eight inch size. So if you just wanted to paint like a little bitty one to like for a tiered tray or for an ornament or, or a banner or something. Or for kids. Or for kids, yeah. The little ones are great for that. Okay, I don't know why I rinsed that brush out because I forgot I need to paint these little tail lights white so that I can paint them yellow in a moment. Give them a base coat. So here's the thing, Penny. The Glow Forges have gone up in price significantly. Like, I think it was March 25th or something like that. They went up and not by a little bit. I think they went up by like $1,000. <clears> so I just can't, in my right mind, continue to push the Glow Forge when I know that for about that same amount, you can get a much better machine. So, Penny, if you're thinking about it, I would contact the guys at Thunder Laser and ask them about the Nova 24. That's the one that I have out in my garage that I use. And it's, yeah, talk to Grant. Tell them Tamara sent you. And um, they will talk to you about like what size machine you need, depending on what you're going to be doing and stuff like that. If you're running a business, you may want to even get the bigger one, which is the Nova 35. But if you're just doing this as like a hobby and, and like a, you know, a, a sort of a small business, not like a serious, like pumping out lots of orders business, then you could probably get away with the Nova 24. <laughs> are the lines drew on or are they laser? They're lasered on. Lasered on. And I think next we can go ahead and start painting like our polka dots and our stripes and things like that on the white. Let me do another coat real quick on these little tail lights. Ali is taking some pictures for the blog. Oh, they were gone. That's okay. Let me see this right here. Oh, where you can still see the lines through mm -hmm. the paint. Let me do some red, and you can take a picture of me paint one of these little red stripes. Or are they red? Yeah, the polka dots are red. We like to get some pictures for the blog. That way, when we post a, a blog post about this, you guys would have like a visual to go along with what we're trying to explain in the blog. And when I paint these live, sometimes the only way to do that is to snap the pictures while I'm live. So it can be kind of tricky. Okay, painting those polka dots red and then the stripes, or no, not the stripes, the stripes are blue, but then the top <laughs> of this little firecracker is red. Melissa says no typewriter today. <laughs> yeah, no typewriter. Our assistant, Shan, that's a college student, um, she is, was she a junior, Aaliyah? Senior. 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 She was a senior. So you can imagine how busy her senior year has been. And um, so we, we, told her to just go and focus on her senior year of college and get back with us when she's not as busy. So she's not been here taking pictures. We've just been taking them with our iPhones. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna rinse this little brush out. This is an itty bitty little flat tip brush. And it's kind of handy for painting a little bitty areas. Uh, the red is called primary red. It's a good one. And for the blue on this rocket, I think I'm just gonna use the same blue as the truck. Penny says thanks, that's why she wanted to talk to you before she did it. Yep, I, I definitely would advise you go ahead and get the thunder, or the thunder if you can afford it. And then the bottom has a stripe. Her 24, her Thunder 
I love mine too. I use it, well, I used it today to cut out this one. And I mean, it just makes it to where I can like, in a hurry, I can run out there, I can cut out a door hanger and be sitting down and painting 10 minutes later. It's just so fast. Artisan and Comforts wants to know if you utilize Pinterest at all. Uh, well, for what? Like, I mean, yeah, we, we post all of our designs and things like that on Pinterest. We're using it for the blog and whatnot. I think I'm going to use this paint pen to do these little bitty designs on the, um, on the top of these firecrackers. Cause they're kind of like red and blue and they're so skinny that I think using the paint pen will be easier. So there's the blue and then let me get the red one. This, these are Posca paint pens and I have a multi set over here. Let me see if this is working. Yeah. I have a multi multi set over here that can do, that has like 15 colors. show you what we got going on so far. There's our, our rockets. Okay, uh, we also need to do um, the stars on our little buntings, and I may see about doing those with a paint pen, simply because that's easier, maybe even faster, to draw those little stars. Uh, this paint pen's dying. I must have used that one too much. Let me swap. I also have some of these. These are the Artistro acrylic paint markers, and they are just as good as the Posca's, but they're a little bit cheaper. Just make sure you shake them till you hear that little clackety noise in there, and then you pump them on like a piece of paper or something. Oh yeah, this one's covering way better. I'm gonna use this to do the stars because it's just easier to control and make sure my stars have a nice, neat little pump point. Sometimes that's hard to achieve with a paintbrush. There we go. What is the name of the company? Thunder Laser, Tamara. Um, and I have a link that you can go to, but you'll have to text me for it. I put my texting number up in the description. Oh, Aaliyah that got it for you. There you go. Yeah, it's just a straight link though. Yeah, so that link won't tell them that I sent you, but if you will, when you call and talk to them, they're really nice. They will tell, like they'll say like, what kind of wood are you going to be cutting? And like, how big are the pieces you're going to be cutting? And they will talk to you, talk through all of this with you. They'll ask you like where you're going to be plate putting it, where you're going to be storing it. And they'll, they'll talk to you about like all the logistics of it and help you find the machine that's going to be a best fit for you. Um, just be sure and tell them that Tamara sent you. That way um, they know that I'm, I'm giving them some kudos over here. <laughs> well, and it helps Grant know what they're doing with it. Yeah, yeah, and that helps Grant too to know that like our door hanger people are, are using it for making door hangers and whatnot, and sometimes it's hard for them to know that sort of thing. They don't know what people buy their machines for. Which marker tip do you find yourself using the most? Um... Well, this one says it's three millimeters, so probably this size. Again, those little lines were already pre-drawn on the on the thing with the laser. I just had to trace inside the lines. Same thing for these little stars. Y'all can't see them, but they're laser etched, and I'm just tracing right over them. Makes it way easier. Linda says Thunder's customer service is amazing. Yes, Thunder is great. So if you're intimidated by owning a laser machine and intimidated by the tech part of it, I will just, this needs another coat. I will just say that like they offer a one hour complimentary call with you after you purchase the machine. And when you're get when you've got it all plugged up and ready to go, you can set up that and schedule that call with them, and they will uh, show you step by step how to cut out like your first piece. They'll give you sort of like a little tour of the software that they use called Lightburn, and it's just really helpful. Like I used it, I was a little frustrated trying to figure it out myself the first time, and then I realized, oh, I didn't know they did these calls, and so I booked a call. 
And within an hour on that call, he had me cutting out my first door hanger. And ever since then, I've been up and running and doing it myself. And so it's just, it was really nice because they have a way they can link to your computer and show you click by click exactly what to do. And so it's just real helpful. Uh, Mary Ellen, these that I were, I'm using right now are the RT, <laughs> Artistro acrylic paint markers. These are in my Amazon favorites linked up in the profile or up in the description. <laughs> Tamara, I like your name too. Do you say it the same way I do? Or is it Tamara or Tamara? Mine's just Tamara. I, I say it as if there's only two A's in it. <laughs> okay. The little stars on the red also need to be painted. So we're going to quickly do those. Jessica is asking if you place it in a the laser machine in a garage or does it need a well ventilated area? So mine is in my garage and when I get ready to cut, the I will just raise the garage door like that much and feed the the tube that ventilates it out of the garage. Um, that's, and I do it that way because I have sort of like a temporary setup because we plan to move that laser machine out to the shop when the shop is done. And so I didn't want to put like a permanent hole in my, in my garage wall. But if you knew that like you were going to be doing this all the time, you could create like a hole in the wall that's similar to like the kind of hole you would have with a dryer vent and you could just vent it right out the wall there. And my husband built a cart for it to sit on and everything, so it's just real handy. Okay, now these are blue mm -hmm. and red. So let's use the same blue. We'll paint this one blue. These little paint pens are handy dandy. Now the ones I'm using right now are the pasta ones. <laughs> I don't really have a preference. I like them both. But I will say the Artistro are a little cheaper. She says she says it just like you do. Okay. Oops, this has got something on it. Let me dab it off. Okay, we're getting close to the finish line here of being able to do our finishing touches and fun things. Let's do one last half and then we'll want to replace it. Alright, so if you will comment and tell me um, what's your favorite kind of craft to do. Comment that and we will pick one last person for a happy mail. From Facebook. From Facebook. Hey Brett. What's up? I need to make something flat. So where's that big hammer that we have? <laughs> that you have the, the meat kitchen. mallet? Yeah. It's in the drawer. It's not one of the girls you're flattening, is it? <laughs> I wish. It's in the drawer underneath the bread. <laughs> where's that big hammer we have in the kitchen? He's talking about the meat mallet. He, I don't I think he's he's all about he's eleven. He'll be twelve in September. And he and I got him for Christmas uh, a, a set of a bunch of different colors of polymer clay. And he is having a blast this past week making stuff with that polymer clay. And then he bakes it in the oven. So he made his own little like poop emoji and he put like a little mustache on it. He's just having so much fun with it. I love how creative it is. So uh, I see lots of people saying painting is their favorite. What else did we see? No. What, Charlie? Hey, back. Fix. I'll have to fix her after my live. I can't fix her right now. Yeah, but like, I mean, All right, well, I don't need anything else on this table, so. <laughs> All right, uh, our last Happy Mail winner is Leisha Passmore. So if you will send us your address, Leisha, we will send you something in the mail. Okay, I'm going to switch back to this itty bitty flat tip brush, and I'm going to use it to paint the stripes on our bunting flag up here. Jody's asking about the odor on the paint panels. She's looking for odor-free for her asthma issues. I mean, Leah, you can tell me, but I don't smell anything. Do you smell anything out no, of that one? and I have asthma, so if you... <laughs> the Posca pins probably have a slightly 
Like, just putting it to my nose, the Posca pens have a slightly stronger scent, but I don't smell the Artistro ones hardly at all. He found the mallet. Do you hear him? Sounds like somebody's doing construction in the kitchen. I don't know what he's pounding out, but I'd be willing to bet it's probably some of that poly polymer clay. <laughs> painting tumblers, t-shirts, Cricut. Cricut used to be something I did all the time before I started painting. I did um, like scrapbooking and card making with my Cricut. I'm doing a second coat on this red on these on this little firecracker because it got some blue in it or something and it wasn't looking right. Okay. I think we're just ready for like our finishing touches. I never did do anything in the background of our little truck window to kind of make it look shaded, but I think that's okay. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it as is because it's a little late now for that. So now we can go through with our paint pens and kind of do some finishing details and lines and stuff. And then we, I'm gonna, at the very, very end, I'm gonna take some of this puff glitter glue and I'm gonna do some firecrackers. So we'll do those last. Hang on, I better shake this. Okay, I think we're good. So this is the Artistro pen and I'm just gonna use it to kind of outline some of the details of our truck. Again, these are not meant to look perfect. They don't need to be like coloring book lines that are perfect, perfect on the edge of something. Um, I like for them to look a little bit more doodled. So if they aren't perfectly on the edge, I kind of feel like that's even better. Whoops, see, I got that one way off the line, but that's okay. I like Debbie's answer. She does a lot of different crafts, depends on what the mood strikes. Yep, I like that answer too. I could hear Charlie fighting with her brother in the other room. Robin had built a desk similar to in January, but she still has the same two feet of creative space as the rest of the desk. <laughs> right? I've got my brushes over here. I got all my other stuff over there. I got all these paints over here, and then like my camera stands and everything else. It doesn't take long before you're like, where where did this huge desktop go? I thought I had a lot more space than this. What should I put on this little license plate? I mean, I guess we could pers I, maybe I could leave it and I could personalize it for somebody. Cause I hate to fill it out. I'm gonna rotate this around just so I can do some lines around the edge of the truck up here. If details are hard for you, you just need to try not to be so perfectionist with them. Um, when I let go and just do it because it's fun, I get much better results. If I try to do it perfectly and stay perfectly on like my little um, etched lines that are on there from, from the laser, if I try to stay perfect on all that stuff, then I, I usually don't like the results as much. Let me switch to a smaller one. I wanna get a skinnier one. I've got a slightly skinnier Posca pen here. And I kinda wanna do some little details on these firecrackers. And yeah, I think so too. When I do it faster and I use like a light touch, I usually like the results way better. And so some of these lines aren't on the example, but because the original was designed by one of my design team members, um, I tend to add a few of my own little personal style. Like I, I just like the way this looks better with a little bit more of the black lines. I'm tempted to add them too to these letters. Or some, just add a little bit. If you look at something and you're just like, it just doesn't feel finished. 
then you probably need to add highlights or outlines or something like that to make it feel more finished to you. See, I was trying to do that pretty quickly so I didn't agonize over getting it just perfect. Now I can get like a white paint pen and I can do some little white squigglies and things like that to add personality to the different elements. We'll do some squiggles in these side mirrors. A little bit of squiggles up here on the window. Let's see, we could do, I may have to do a second coat on these little stars. They're kind of not as bright white as I want them to be. Sometimes with a white paint pen, you have to go over a certain area twice because it just doesn't get thick enough. Do the same to these down here. Sometimes too, if your white paint pen isn't covering very well, you can kind of give it a little pump and it'll come out just a little thicker. Okay, that looks pretty good. Oh, I wanna do some on these little windows. Um, do a little bit on the bumper here. I wanna switch to a skinnier one to do this part. So on the original design, she also had lots Oh, hang on. It's not coming out good. She had lots of little highlights and things like that around like the different elements of the truck, which I kind of like. So we'll add those in. She had some kind of going up around here. See how all this kind of just makes everything look more vibrant. a little bit right across here. What yellow did you make those tail lights? Uh, the yellow is primary yellow. Okay. I think now we're ready for our puff paint. <laughs> Aliyah's like, I've been waiting for this part. She wants to take it to get it on the, on the blog here. So this is just, it's, it's puffy is the brand puffy 3d paint. This is gold, gold glitter it says works on almost everything. So it's got this teeny, teeny little fine print. I'm gonna like practice by squeezing it out on a piece of paper to get it flowing because you don't wanna have any like funky air bu bubbles. Burps. You have little burps. And then once you get it going, you can pretty much just draw with it. And of course you can still see these uh, firecrackers laser etched on the design. I may have to rotate the door hanger to get Part of this. <coughs> Let me show you so far what we got. Do you see? I don't want to hold it too much upright because I don't want the glue to, it, it is kind of dimensional. I don't want it to start sliding away. And I'm going to do the little stars like that too if I can. They may not look like stars, but um, well, no, they might. Let's see, there's a line there. And I can squeeze this out pretty fine. I have lots of practice in, in muscle memory in doing this because my mom used to let me do this when I was like 10 or 12. We would do this together on t-shirts. We would, She would applique, put appliques on shirts and then we would add puff paint to them. But for some reason, I haven't done it since then. So I'm a little out of practice. So you kind of have to practice with getting the uh, the flow of the paint to be consistent as it's coming out, but it's kind of satisfying and fun, so give it a try. Gina likes that puffy paint detail. I do too. I kind of like feeling like maybe I need to do this more often on door hangers. I say that every time I use glitter and then I don't use, I don't end up doing it very often, but I think because a lot of times I paint on live, I feel like I need to like hurry up and finish it. And so I don't a lot of times do the little things like this that take extra time. 
but I thought this might be cool for the fireworks. Okay, so our first firework is done. Whoops, I just got my hand in my test spot over here. Let me show you the first one. So this will be super cute when it's dry. Okay, don't get your hand in it because you'll smudge it. Although if you do that, keep a baby wipe handy so you can quickly like wipe it away. Could I use like your uh, iPad to look up what a cool emoji looks like? Yeah. Brad. One second. No. No. Nope. Don't mess up his clay creations. Older brother comes in and starts aggravating him. Yep, it was a big deal back in the 90s and maybe the late 80s. Do you remember the silk flower poinsettia sweatshirt? Yep, we had some of those. We sure did. Walmart used to sell applique sets that you could buy and you could iron them onto sweatshirts or whatever you were making. And then you could take these little puff paints and you could add details to them to kind of make them look cute. And I can remember getting so excited around Christmas time when they would put out the new ones and my mom and I would go and we would pick them out. And the reason we would make them though was because we always had like a, a church ladies Christmas party. And at the and we were all supposed to bring some sort of like gift that was gonna be um, for our, like our Dirty Santa or Chinese auction gift. And so we would always pick out like a large sweatshirt that anybody um, could fight over. Um, and sometimes she would do one size and I would do another. So, you know, if you couldn't win one, maybe you could win the other. It was a lot of fun. I have lots of good memories of those times. Which just tells me that I need to do stuff like this with Charlie <laughs> as she gets older. Okay, our fireworks are done. Look how cute these are. So cute. And you could go crazy with the puff paint on here. You could do like puff paint polka dots, puff paint stars. Like you could add all kinds of fun little details. I can't wait to see what this looks like when it's dry. Um, I bought this set. Um, it came with a bunch of different colors on, at Walmart, actually. I think it came with like 20 different little bottles like this. Um, and this is the gold one. So I hope you guys enjoyed painting with me today. This was a lot of fun. Um, so... If you want to paint one of these yourself, I've got the link up above for you. You can go and get the template version, which you can trace on your wood or on a canvas or something like that and paint your own. If you want to buy the wood cut out with the design laser etched in it like we used today, um, you can also find one of those. I would recommend if you're wanting the door hanger size to get the 20 inch one. Um, and then if you want to get my beginner's guide to painting door hangers ebook, it is right up above. You can um, grab it there on TikTok. You can find all these things in the profile. This is the patriotic truck. I can't wait to see how you paint it. If you want to get the supply list for this, text me with the word list and I'll send it out um, in a couple of days. And as always, thank y'all for painting with me. I will see y'all next time. Bye y'all.